why do some teams seem to love Anthony Richardson? You know, this, he's top 10 talent. His talent is off the chart. He's got the ability to be one of, if not the best player in the NFL. You can't coach what Anthony Richardson has. It's the most athletic, productive quarterback I think ever, you know, in terms of his numbers. When I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, the quote was, there's never been anything like him. Right. And how do you say no to that? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Florida Gators football. And greetings tonight from the swamp. If I could describe Ant one word, I would say uh, generational. You know, he's he's a generational talent. There goes Richardson. See he will not be caught a 73-yard touchdown burst. Richardson leapfrogs a defender out of bounds. Give me a break. I don't know anything going to be more impressive than the height he got on the back handspring he did earlier today. What? Okay, just casually pulling a back handspring off. He's got a chip on his shoulder. You know, I think there's something to prove here. Anthony Richardson does not look like a day one starter to me. He's going to be a quarterback who will eventually start in his second, maybe third year. It's going to take a team that not only has the belief and willingness to address those flaws, but the time in the right situation. If you think, guys, the consensus sort of seemed to be coming in when Anthony Richardson would go late in the first round. I'm not so sure about that. It's certainly possible that he could be pushed up in the top ten. You know, uh, I'm willing to bring anything, you know, anything, everything that they need from me. You know, uh, I'm going to work hard. You know, I'm going to be dedicated to my craft. I want to be a legend. You know, I want to be like Patrick Mahomes. I want to be like Tom Brady. I, I want to be one of the greats. You know, I will be one of the greats. Anthony Richardson, here we go. And oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. That's a quarterback. Oh, my gosh. Look at him go. Tons of air. That's from the 10. Look at that. Those are beautiful. Oh, on the 30. Beautiful deep balls. My gosh. That was a 60-yard throw. What a day for Anthony Richardson, who has got a big, huge smile on his face. Doing what I did at the combine was definitely a great experience for me. You know, I had a lot of fun. You know, just being one of the people to get invited to go there was definitely a blessing. My main goal was to run a fast 40. You know, uh, just hit 4-4, just showcase my speed, and I did that. I didn't necessarily reach my goals when it came to the jumping aspect. You know, as much as I, I wanted to, I didn't. But, you know, I, I can't be selfish. I did set some records, you know, so I guess I did good enough. <laughs> you know, I still throw. Uh, almost every day. I still live almost every day and I still got to get my sprint work in. So, you know, just keep having the same mindset I had, you know, since I declared, you know, not focus on the media, not focus on mock drafts, not focus on what anybody saying, you know, whether it's good or bad. And just keep going as if I'm going to be the last pick in the draft. What I got first? Uh, first step pitch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the main thing is mechanically being able to come here for two straight months helps, right? Like you just, same thing every day and you start to feel a certain way. And so he's gotten much more, I don't want to use accurate because I don't think he was an inaccurate thrower, but he's gotten more precise, right? It's, and now the miss windows aren't 18 inches, they're three inches, right? And so I think that's been the thing that he's improved with the most is, is just being able to replicate the same motion and mechanics over and over and over again. You don't see the, the level of skills um, in terms of a thrower, a runner, um, his strength, athleticism. You know, those things are all elite. Um, but what really stands out is how complete he is as a prospect, how well he understands the game, how coachable, and then how much upside he still has. I mean, he's a generational talent. Yeah, yeah turn him on. <laughs> the outside stand and then, yeah, there they you know, we've spent a lot of time focusing on his drops, his, you know, pro-style footwork, and, and just building a level of consistency from rep to rep. You know, uh, just being consistent, you know, footwork. You know, I, I feel like I come a long way with that, like being consistent with my footwork, uh, using my hips, not mainly relying on my arm. You know, just trusting myself, you know, knowing that I can make every throw and just doing it. 
this is a grind. This is a grind, and he is obsessed with this right now. Uh, incredible work ethic, right? I mean, he's on time, he's prepared, he comes and trains. All these, more articles on him, more interviews on him, more spotlight on him, it doesn't change him as a person, right? He comes in, he gets to work, and that's his focus at the end of the day, right? Like all the other attention, I think is cool, but is not the focus of why he's prepared. Remember when Cam Newton started doing the rifle back? He was like, right here. Whether we're doing a vertical jump, whether we're throwing routes, uh, he wants to be the best at it, right? And he wants to go out and perform well, no matter what that drill is, no matter what that exercise is. You know, pro day, I just plan on ripping it. Just showcase what I'm able to do with my arm. You know, I feel like I did everything else on the field. So just showing them that I can not spin it. You know, just make myself one of the top picks in the draft. Going back to games over my pro day, you know, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm able to just be myself and just do my thing. I always played like with a football and then running around the house with one. But I didn't realize how fun it was until like I was like four or five and I thought they just running into people with a big old helmet on my head. I don't even think it was maybe just me physically playing. I think it was just from me like playing video games and then like understanding that I was able to do some of those things that I saw in the game. Then going outside and doing them. I think that's what made me like fall in love with football. And when my middle school coach brought me to the swamp, we were like sitting in the, in the stands, and I just remember like sitting down trying to watch, and everybody else is just standing up around me. I'm like, bro, I can't see. And I was like, bro, I'm destined to be a Gator. All my friends would be like, bro, you about to go to UF, bro. I always wanted to do that. And I'm like, okay, like now we, we, we kind of getting somewhere. You know, so our recruiting class is definitely different, you know, because we, we've had history. Big G, you know, I played with him at AAU basketball. Baby J, you know, AAU basketball with him and playing against him in high school. I, I met Ant through AAU basketball back in eighth grade. We grew up together. It felt great knowing that I played I played alongside one of my best friends. It wasn't more so like we were teammates, you know, we were like actually family and you know, like we understood each other. You know, uh, I never been like, in a quarterback room where there's other guys like getting ready to get started. You know, I was always just pretty much like the lone QB by myself. You know, Kyle was a beast. You know, we used to always talk about how accurate he was. Like, he threw it somewhere, and he already knew where it was going to go. And it was like, dang. Trask takes a shot to the end zone. That's a Gators touchdown. And then EJ getting in right behind him and just, you know, making plays. I'm like, bro, these dudes are legit. Richardson on the field for the first time. He's a wow. But it's still surprising. Like, people, like, hit me up like, bro, I want to be like you. I'm like, well, I just got in this position. I'm like, I would have never thought this was going to happen so soon. Play action, move the pocket, you're taking your shot. Nothing's there, I got to move. Keep my eyes downfield, off balance, fade away, off platform throw, and it's an absolute pearl. Richardson into the end zone. Caught well, miraculously. Shorter. You know, from freshman year, COVID, year two is the 21 season. And then we're inheriting a player who's only played right around 200 snaps, one start. What a play by Richardson. A ball fake to keep it alive. And he's got a man of blow in the back of the end zone. And Jeff Gravy on Frazier's. The crazy thing is that exact same scenario. He did that in practice. I mean, these are the types of plays the guy can make, right? I mean, these are things that you can't coach. He can pull it down and, and go get it with his feet, and he has a cannon of an arm, so he can do both. Let's it fly. Pearsall wide open. My most memorable one was definitely Florida State, and just watching greatness happen from his performance. The play against LSU, I mean, I made a little a block, but it wasn't a huge block, and he still took it to the house. It's a block from ETN. 30, 35, 40. Midfield on the left side, numbers. Cut back and 
side, still on his feet. 30, 25, 10. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he's going to go. I'm just running behind him like no way this is happening right now. You know, I feel like it was on me to make sure I made the city of games real proud. You know? and I just felt like I owed it to them just to you know, do enough on the field and make everybody happy, put a smile on somebody's face. Anthony was 10 when we first got to Gainesville. Life in Miami was not good for us. I didn't want my kids to grow up in that environment. I wanted to give them better, even if I had to struggle. Growing up, my uncle, job and name, we, we call him Tanker. So my uncle Tanker Lane, um, he was very influential in Anthony's life when it came to football. So my uncle Tanker played a very big part of his life growing up. That was the male figure in his life. My Uncle Tanker is definitely important to me, you know, because he introduced me to football. And you know, just to have somebody like that in your family, you know, and have someone like that believe in you, you know, it, it felt good. You know, it kind of gave me like a, a sense of you know, peace. I used to lay Anthony down, tuck him in bed, and I used to go on in my room. When the rooms were close enough, the doors were open, we were able to pray together because I wanted to be able to pray out loud. And once I said my prayer, Anthony said his prayer, and at the end of his prayer, he was like, and God, can you let my mama have a baby? <laughs> so at this point, I was like, what? And so I get up and go in his room, literally five seconds, and he's acting like he's in a deep sleep. So Anthony literally prayed for his brother. He prayed for his mom to have a baby. He wanted a sibling there with him. I don't have anybody to play with, talk to, or anything like that. And it just so happened that my little bro Corey was born, and now it's like my mini-me. We really had like a father-son relationship. Like, he wanted me to not have the problems that he had in middle school and high school and stuff like that. And I didn't realize like the magnitude of like, how much like, I meant to him, you know, until like, my mom would tell me stories about how he would like be asking like, where am I if I'm at a football camp and stuff, and like when I'm coming home and stuff, and crying if he can't see me. I didn't realize that I meant that much to him. <laughs> this little dude, like, he watching my every move, so I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm on point for him. Cause I don't want to make the wrong move, and then you know he's following me. Then he make the wrong move, and both of us in the in, in the wrong situation. So I always try to make sure I was on point for him, and you know, just lead him the right way. You know, if you lost, if you ask a lot of people around uh, in Gainesville, you know, um, I had a, a black little mountain bike, and whenever you saw me on it, you saw my little brother on the handlebars. You know, I had to take him to school. I had to take him to get food. You know, I had to get him dressed for school. You know, so. Um, that's my brother, but I love him like he's my son. You know, I think that those things, uh, those responsibilities um, have required Anthony to see life a little bit different. He's had to grow up a little bit quicker maybe than some of us did. He wants to make sure that everyone else around him is all right before he's taking care of himself. So like playing with him, like of course he made a lot of great plays, but he was gonna make sure that you was in the best position that you needed to be and also. I know at times I could definitely try to please everybody, you know, and not everybody knows who I am. And my family, they know who I am. And that's what I think about when times get tough, when times get hard for me. Like, I remember, like, they don't care how many touchdowns I throw, they don't care how many interceptions I throw, and they still gonna love me for who I am. And, you know, it, it, that definitely resonated with me last year during the season when, when things were hard for me. I just remember, like, my family, like, that's what helped me get here. It, was, it, just, it just keep me level-headed and calm, and I, I definitely appreciate them. You dominate on Saturdays, so you can play on Sundays. You're looking at the Condren Indoor Practice Facility down in Gainesville, where Anthony Richardson, number four quarterback prospect in the NFL draft, we'll see him throwing a little bit on Pro Day.
I don't know that anything on the field is going to change the minds of decision makers in the NFL, but I'm expecting a fireworks show, man. I mean, <laughs> if you've got all this talent, let it rip. I mean, he, he was confined a little bit in the, you know, at the combine with, in terms of they're, they're all running the same routes and throwing the same routes and different receivers. Now he's, he's got his guys in his facility, scripted workout. I mean, just let it fly today. The way he carries himself, not just his own talent, but the way he, he prepares for everything, the way he takes on challenges. Like, he's not scared of anything, not backing down. You know, he's a professional, I think. You know, going to the next level is going to be an easy transition for him because he, he was already a pro when he was here. First year starter in a new system. Um, I think he really grew from a leadership standpoint. I think uh, his knowledge of defensive front pressure coverage relative to protection. Um, those are the three areas. Obviously, playing quarterbacks about a lot of things, but those were areas in particular I thought he grew up a lot. Honestly, I wouldn't say there were nerves, but there were definitely thoughts going through my head. You know, and I was like, "Bro, you've done this before. You know, you've done it almost every day last year. You know, it's just another day. It's throwing it at practice." I don't think anybody's going to look at Anthony Richardson and be like, mm, "I don't know if this guy's got it physically." Please, are we blind? I just trying to keep myself cool, calm and collected. I was just so you know, shocked about how quiet everybody was. I'm like, why is it so quiet? Why everybody so quiet? So go. The ball comes off his hand differently than, than all the other quarterbacks in this class in probably the last few years. I mean, the ball just jumps out of the guy's hand. It, it genuinely does look effortless. He just flicks it out there. To go. Goodness gracious. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we had some breaking news coming out of Anthony Richardson's pro day. I think he threw a deep ball and it scraped the ceiling. Oh, baby, arm talent. <laughs> I've done it before, actually. Um, let it rip. Bob hit the top of the thing. I'm like, bro, that's the one thing I did not want to do. So go. Anthony's arm strength is his superpower. Everything just looks so easy, as you can see. So, uh, we're done. Right, we're done. We are done. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Yeah, I'm uh, here with my fellow Gainesville and Anthony Richardson, and uh, you were the guy everybody came to watch. What do you think of the uh, performance you put on? I think I did pretty decent, you know. So showcase my arm, showcase my talent. Uh, it hasn't hit me yet that you know I won't be here as as much as I was growing up. But I know uh, once I am drafted and, and things are new for me, I might shed a few tears. You know, just missing Gainesville. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to watch you today, man. I thought you did a great job, and we're excited to watch the next step in your career, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Really nothing, just getting the suit. You know, I already see that my suit is coming along. I see that his suit coming along. Also, I'm just waiting for my turtleneck. It's, I'm wearing the black one, so. Erase that. We had so many colors, so many like ideas, but we weren't trying to go too big. How do you feel about your waist on the jacket? Simple, but make it look good at the same time. First, I wanted the green one, then I switched it. I said I wanted the black one, then after that, I wanted, I wanted the match with him, so I got a green one. Okay, but well, if we need to look like that. I want to be a legend, you know. I want to be like Patrick Mahomes. I want to be like Tom Brady. I, I want to be one of the greats, you know. I will be one of the greats. I 
and you have your mom and you have your little brother here. Mom, you said you don't get really nervous, that you're not an emotional person. All right, so how, how proud is this moment? I've always been proud of him. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just everybody else is now getting to see how awesome they both are. Okay, welcome to Kansas City and the 2023 NFL Draft. It's time to get the show started. The 2023 NFL Draft is now officially open. I'm trying my hardest not to think about it, but it's like everywhere I go, I just get glimpses and flashes of it in my mind. I'm like, bro, chill, this is gonna, it's going to be good. Relatively short walk, but a long journey that these players have gone on to reach this point. There's Anthony Richardson, who's expected to go early at the University of Florida quarterback. Like, it's not only my day. Like, even though I'm the one whose name is going to get called, like, it's not only my day. Like, they're the ones that helped me get there. Like, their name is going to be called, you know, inside because they're the ones that helped me get to this point and they pushed me so far. So, you know, it, I, I just can't wait, man. Now we get to the Colts. It's got to be a quarterback. Anthony. How are you doing, Ken? Chris Ballard here in the Colts. We're going to take you. Seeing all the families together, it, it becomes a reality when you hear your name, Des, and, and all of a sudden, boom, you can prepare for it. But that's a, that's a dream of a lifetime. With the fourth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Richardson. Anybody saying that they want to be the next me, don't even try to be like anybody else, you know, because you're one of one. Just try to be the best version of yourself that you can be, you know. Uh, you can take stuff from me, but like, you can be way better than me.